Good evening, everybody. It is a big day in the CBC community, and it all starts right here at St. Charles West on the Cadet Student Network. My name is Tom Eichwald, and alongside me is Dan Locke. We have sectional basketball coming your way as CBC takes on the Hawks from Hazelwood Central here on CSN. This game starts at 7.45. At 8 o'clock, we have the state hockey game going on at Enterprise Center. We'll do our best to give you updates as that game develops here in case you're just watching this one. But we hope you've got those dual mon monitors at home and you'll be able to take in a full evening of what will hopefully be a great day for CBC. As I mentioned, my name is Tom Eichwald and alongside me is Dan Locke. Dan, we have the Hawks coming in here with a record of 17 and 10, the Cadets 19 and 7. What do you think about when you think about the way CBC has gotten here? Well, I think CBC, uh, as far as recently, um, you know, they, they, they made it through their district and didn't play particularly well. Um, got off to slow starts in both games, but were able to uh, were able to get it together against Parkway Central and then as well as beat DeSmet. And as you mentioned, those scores against uh, Parkway Central and DeSmet, CBC beating the Colts of Parkway Central 70-54 to on their own floor. And then DeSmet, that uh, rough and tumble game, 62-53, as Caleb Love picked up 25 points, 9 rebounds, a game where it really took CBC a while to get going, which we also saw in the Parkway Central game. And it's going to be key for the Cadets to get off to a fast start tonight. Particularly troubling in that DeSmet game was the three-point shooting for the Cadets. They couldn't buy a basket. Only one three in the first half, um, which and they were about one for ten, I think, and, and Caleb got one. But uh, second half, there were two big threes hit, one by Larry Hughes and one by Rob Martin, and they were in key moments of the game, and I think that's what propelled the, the cadets to victory. It was that, uh, and then, of course, the big block by Karate Brenson and then the dunk at the other end by Caleb as they took the cadets until a good way through the third quarter to get going. Let's talk a little bit about what we can expect from Hazelwood Central tonight. How did they get here? Well, they advanced out of their district beating Rittner 71-38, and then last Thursday, they beat Hazelwood West 54-41 to in that game. Jonathan Dunn, a player we'll talk about tonight, number 13 for the Hawks, he led the way with 15 points, 5 rebounds. But it was Hazelwood West Central not really pulling away until that fourth quarter. So they hung in the game for a long time, and the game really sort of didn't take off until they had a big fourth quarter, which was the difference. So we'll look to see if they, uh, if the longer the game stays closer, a team coming off a win like that could maybe have a little bit of a momentum advantage because they, they've had that late surge. Right. And I guess we'll, we could talk a little bit about um, the initial meeting between these two clubs. Yep, was just getting to that on G January 23rd. CBC defeated Hazelwood Central at Hazelwood Central 80-64. to And in that game, the Cadets did get off to a fast start. It was 28-12 to after the first quarter. A 16-point deficit in that quarter. The final deficit, the Cadets won by 16. So quite literally, the difference in that game was the start the Cadets got off to. What do you see when you look at the breakdown of that game, Dan? Well, CBC shot fantastically. Um, you know, at the line, they were 21 for 25. That's 84%. Caleb Love got 35 points, went 10 for, 10 for 20 from the field, and shot 12 for 13 from the line. Um, so they definitely did their job in that department. Um, to shoot and shooting uh, defensively um, we talked a little bit about this before the broadcast but we um, beat them on the boards we out rebounded them by five and had 14 steals so we're, there was a lot of extra possessions that CBC was able to take advantage of. yes yeah, so you mentioned the extra possessions 21 defense these are not formally turnovers but 21 defensive rebounds 14 steals in that game that's 35 bonus possessions uh, that the cadets were able to take advantage of. We'll look to see if they can do the same tonight. Again, we are coming to you live from St. Charles West, the home of the Warriors. Tom Eichwald and Dan Locke getting set to bring you CBC versus Hazelwood Central for a chance to advance to the state quarterfinal round of the basketball tournament. We are getting set for the national anthem in the starting lineup. We will give you those as soon as we have them. Trying to listen to the PA to see exactly when we're going to start the uh, national anthems, but it's looking like Hazelwood Central will be wearing those all yellow uniforms and the cadets wearing the all white that you saw in the DeSmet game just last week. In case you're wondering about awkward silences, we are listening to the PA to see what happens so we can bring it to you. 
Always that awkward point in a broadcast where we can't really hear him, we just guess. This is a loud gymnasium. It is, and uh, probably only going to get louder. You'd imagine the CBC student section might be a little bit smaller with the hockey game going on as well, but there's plenty of neutrals out to watch what should be a pretty entertaining game, really. And a lot of alumni as well, I see it around here. Still waiting. What other filler you got for us, Dan, as we kind of sit around and wait? Well, I think with... I'm running out, with so I'm putting <laughs> you on the spot. With Hazelwood Central, I think some of the keys to the game. You're I bailed out by the starting lineup, so I'm going to give them to the people. We'll come back to the keys okay. of the game. Sorry to do that, but we are kind of winging it as we uh, wait for the pace of the PA director. So starting for Hazelwood Central, zero, Tevin Gowans. Number one, Nathaniel Garrett. Number three, David Roberts. Number 10, Cole Farrell. And rounding out the starting lineup, no surprise, number 13, Jonathan Dunn. And Hazelwood Central, the Hawks are coached by Brandon Gilmore. On the other side for the CBC Cadets, they're on the left side of your screen. Starting zero, Chevalier Brenson, the junior forward. Number one, junior guard Rob Martin. I'm going to take a wild guess that the next one is going to be number two, Caleb Love. Good call. Just a guess. I had a feeling. Number 11, I think he even got a little Larry Hughes was the introduction. As number 11. And then rounding out the starting lineup, number 23, Michael West getting the start tonight, the senior forward. And the cadets are, of course, coached by Justin Tatum. Getting set, looked like uh, the, I wonder if they're going to skip the national anthem because they did it before the girls game just before this. Sometimes when you have back-to-back -back games, you do it before the start of festivities. So it looks like we're just going to take the floor. Okay. As we do, Dan, what uh, should we expect from Hazelwood Central? You were talking about some keys to the yeah, game for them. I think it's Hazelwood Central is an athletic group. Um, Tevin Gowans, he plays great defense. He's got 61 steals on the year. Uh, he's someone that you have to watch. And I don't think they're an ultra-disciplined offensive team, but – probably play a lot of isolation ball and like the fast break. Obviously, they can score points. They put up 64 on CBC and had a good shooting game, although they're not particularly great shooters from three-point range. We're underway. Opening tip was won by Jonathan Dunn, but CBC will get the first possession. Rob Martin down low to Mike West. First shot of the game, no good. A lot of contact down low, still on the floor. It's finally pulled in by Hazelwood Central. That is Nathaniel Garrett pulling it in. And they're going to get uh, a travel called against Jonathan Dunn, number 13. CBC again wearing the all-white uniforms. They're going left to right across your screen. Hazelwood Central wearing those bright yellow uniforms. They're going right to left. This is Rob Martin for the cadets. As you can see, Hazelwood Central playing one-on-one. -on -one. Senior guard David Roberts all over Caleb Love. Caleb Love just can't keep it in bounds. His toes are out of bounds. A lot of physical defense being played yeah. by David Roberts on Caleb Love. Right. That is going to be an interesting matchup to watch, especially we'll, of course, have to see how the referees are going to handle this game. Are they going to start calling things early? Earliest yeah. indications are they're going to allow some contact. He's face guarding him all over. CBC also in a man-to-man. -man. This is Tevin Gowans. Leaves it for J David Roberts for three, and that's good. First points go to the Hawks. Nice shot by Roberts as he hits the first shot at the Hawks' C tonight. This is Mike West. Got Larry Hughes. Larry Hughes had one of those big three-pointers in the third quarter that David was talking about pregame. We'll look for an opening here early. Instead, it's going to be Rob Martin. Finds Chevalier Brenson, and he's going to draw the foul from Nathaniel Garrett. His first. And we don't have the uh, fouls up on the board, so we're going to have to keep track of them the old-fashioned way here, Dan. Okay. So Nathaniel Garrett has one. That is his first. That'll send Brenson to the line. Free throw shooting, not the 
staple of his game. Oh, got the roll. Makes the first, though. Like that roll. In case you're wondering about the staples of Chevalier Brenson's game, uh, sheer physicality. He comes into this game, he's averaging eight points a game, 62% field goal shooting percentage, but he's also got 11 blocks on the season and averages just under six rebounds a game. Six minutes, 38 seconds remaining in this sectional game between CBC and Hazelwood Central. Three to one is your score, as you see right there at the bottom of the screen. All the graphics and production being run by Randy Gardner as Larry Hughes slips. Turns over the ball, Jonathan Dunn, who's going to go for a lay-in. He draws the contact from Mike West, and that'll be his first. Just about to finish the point. Randy Gardner does such a great job on production, but i got to be careful because I'm standing right next to him. He can hear me this broadcast. I'm not used to that. And we got James Motes and Charlie Bryan working the broadcast tonight as a number of students are also uh, working to shoot some video at the hockey game. Who you got over there, Mr. Gardner? Braden Paulus, representing Cadet Student Network over at the hockey game. I would imagine Braden's tuning in for the start of this game before he gets going, though. So, Braden, we hope you have a good game of shooting video over there and have some fun. Caleb Love with the rebound, 4-1 the score. Hauls in, leaves it for Great West, pass. up and in! Good vision by Caleb Love. What a dish. We talk about the scoring of Caleb Love, but uh, by the way, He's got uh, plenty of assists, too. I thought I had the stat handy, but I don't. Caleb Love averaging is just under three, ass three assists a game. Jonathan Dunn draws another foul. He's going for the and one here. Was one for two at the line last time. So he's now, got three points already. They're going to give that foul to Mike West. That is his second as we have a substitution. It'll be West out. And Kyle Henderson, the senior, in. Dunn is at the line. Starting five still on the floor for the Hawks. Henderson for West is the only substitution of the game so far. That one rattles out. Rebound pulled in by Caleb Love. Rocking some uh, bright orange shoes tonight. Mixing it up after the district tournament. This must be the sectional shoes. Yeah, I wonder if they're laid out. The shooting shoes. Laid out at home. <laughs> there we go. They are. Here we well go. Said. He's Comes a little short. short. Rebound finds its way to Dunn. Is going to go up against Brenson. Good contact from Brenson, but he fights through it. Makes the lead five. With five and a half remaining here in the first quarter. Dunn's up. Got five points real quickly. Six, seven, big man can get out in the open floor. Martin behind the back. He loses the ball. It's taken over by Hazelwood Central. Watch out. Big block by Caleb Love as he got up and denied Jonathan Dunn. Loose ball comes back out for Dunn. Three-point effort from Garrett Good. Momentum going the Hawks' way despite the block from Love. What a start for this Hazelwood Central team. Absolutely. Coach Tatum's getting that timeout he really needs right now. CBC needs to get it together. Five minutes remaining in the quarter. 11 to three is the score. Sorry about the uh, blocks visual there. Can't blame the crowd for being excited, I gotta say. So the Hawks two for two from the three point line. And the and Cadets 0 for, 0 for one. 0 for one and uh, the, the rest of the, their points have come from uh, Mr. Dunn. That they have, he has been the man by and large for Hazelwood Central this season. It's Martin, Brenson, Henderson, Love, and Hughes for CBC. It's Dunn, Gowan, Roberts. Number 10, that's Farrell. And who else we got out there for Hazelwood Central? Get the oh, that turnover by Caleb Love. Caleb Love takes it back. He's going to drive right hand, fights the contact off. There's going to be a foul called on the floor. Who did I miss? Looks like the same starting lineup out there. I think I left somebody off somehow, but it's Gowan. Garrett, I think, is who I missed, number one. Roberts, Farrell, and Dunn for Hazelwood Central. Rob Martin pulling the ball out underneath. To Caleb Love for three. Second good. attempt, good. All right. 
right in front of some cadet fans who enjoyed that one. CBC applying some pressure in a 2-2-1, three-quarters court press. CBC really important to get back quickly on defense and force Hazelwood Central to play a set offense against you. You don't want them running. You don't want them just kind of doing the thing and, and running circles around you. Really got to get back behind them and make them beat you. CBC dropping back into a 2-3 zone. Ball was poked out by Brenson, but a nice adjustment there to pick it back up. Cole Farrell with the bucket. And Hazel Love. Central. Pick from Brenson, goes for it again. Just a little long that time. Rebound pulled on, down by Gowans, and here he goes. Long three attempt, no good. First missed three of the night, and that one's Garrett. And we're gonna get a foul called against Brenson. Yeah, I think they got Kyle Henderson. Did they? With the charge, yeah. It was behind the play. Trying to see exactly how they score this one. It looks like scoring table and the guy working the buzzer and having some fun with it is giving it to Brenson. They are, okay. So that is Brenson's first. These are unofficial, by the way. We don't have a list of the official up on the wall, so we're trying to write them down as they go. So all the stats we're giving you and all the fouls are unofficial. We'll do our best, but uh, just want to be clear about that. Here's Hazelwood Central. The drive up for Dunn. Doesn't come down with it. And it's taken away by Larry Hughes, Jr. Brenson for the Cadets. He's got Henderson under the net. Brenson squares up for the shot. Finger roll with the left. No good. Henderson takes a hack at Dunn. That's a couple, through it. couple misses in, down low that CBC could have had. Garrett drives. No travel called. And the putback is no good. You got a substitute out there for Hazelwood Central. There he is as Brenson knocks the ball out. So that's two on Brenson and two on Mike West. That was number five, Caleb Jones. That is the player that was just fouled. He's the substitute out there. And Brenson uh, has a hard time accepting that foul. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, you know, the size, when it comes to size, Brenson and, and Mike West are our interior defense. Well, and Brenson's saying that you know, the ball was right there in front of me. It's not like I reached around. It's not like I yeah. reached in. Uh, maybe he got him a little bit on the hand and missed the ball. But Well, we gave him a couple second chances there. And, uh, you know, it ended up with us resulting in us getting a foul. So we've got to be better on the boards. Now, interestingly, in that first game, offensive rebounds were at a premium. This is the January 23rd game between these two. CBC had eight offensive rebounds. Hazelwood Central had four. Defensive rebounds, CBC 21. Hazelwood Central 16. Draw your own conclusion from that, but it's a fun statistic. Yes. Rob Martin for three. Good. Step back three from Rob Martin. It's a big shot. CBC putting on the pressure again. Martin with the steal. They're going to get him on a foul as he was reaching in. Should also say Justice Johnson and Mikhail Abdul Hamid on the, in the game for the cadets as well. Martin's first. Another reach called against the Cadets. That's five fouls already for CBC. A lot of fouls in the first game between these two teams as well. In that first game, CBC had 21, Hazelwood Central 16. That one's out off of Larry Hughes Jr., Hawk Ball, with 2.23 remaining in the first quarter. You're watching the Cadets Student Network, Tom Eichwald and Dan Locke, bringing you CBC versus Hazelwood Central. One of these two teams will see their season end tonight, and the other will advance to the sectional game that will be held Saturday at Lindenwood. Junior guard Ahmad Scarborough has just checked in for the first time for the Hawks. And you got some serious, serious rebounding talent out there right now. Jaden Nicholson court. in as well. Right-handed layup, no good. Big block from Love, his second of the night. That was Caleb Jones who tried to take it around Caleb's left side. The Martin. Underneath, he had Justice Johnson who pulls it in. Abdul Hamid is a three-point threat, so watch for him to try to get an open look in that corner over there. This is Abdul Hamid. No, correction, Justice Johnson. Now Martin. 
Minute 47 remaining in the quarter. Cadets trailing by five. Martin drives up top. Hughes, no good. Little long right and rebound is pulled in by Garrett. Minute and a half now. Three point effort, no good from Nicholson. Cadets rebound. Rob Martin's going to try to get baseline. Draws he, draws, the foul. he draws the foul. And they are going to get number two. That is Ahmad Scarborough. The big man, Jonathan Dunn, is out of the game. CBC needs to take advantage of this opportunity, whether it be rebounding or some scoring inside. This is Here love. we go. Drives. Good. He needs a few more of those. He's saying there was contact, too. What did I say? We need to score inside. You do. And we also said we need Caleb Love to get off to a good start. It'd be handy. There's another block from Caleb. Rebound is up. Pulled in again by the Hawks. We're getting a lot of second looks. Caleb Smith comes away with, no, Abdul Hamid had the ball. There was contact between Justice Johnson and Caleb Smith. And are they going to say jump ball, I believe? It'll be a hawk ball underneath. I did not see a foul called. Although they have, they have up there a second foul to a number one. Did they Rob get Rob Martin. Martin with a second foul? That's what the board's telling me. Is it I telling you, That's what it says to me. Hazelwood Central with another three. So the three David, ball going the Hawks David way. Roberts with the toughest job in St. Louis tonight. Garden Caleb Love has got two threes. He's two for two from three. Martin, fade away. No good. Rebound pulled in by Johnson. He's got Abdul Hamid around the outside. Now Caleb Love. Spin move. Goes in. Good. Big time drive and shot make there by Caleb Love. You Rob Martin with a the steal. There it is. Big momentum shift here for the cadets early. 17-15 is the score. And we get an official timeout. Clock is still running. They just stopped it. About six seconds came off. So they're going to reset it. You'll see that down there on the, the bottom of your screen. But two points. Big steal by Rob Martin. And he puts in the points to match. And just like that, the cadets were struggling about a minute or two ago. And you'd have to say they're starting to gain a little momentum right now. Which is currently being stifled by an official timeout. Bad timing if you're a cadet I fan. Yeah, I think they're going to talk about how much time to put back on the clock. That's got to be frustrating. You just start yeah. feeling the momentum, and then there's an issue with the clock. Yeah. Well, while we have a little time, uh, we've got three players in foul trouble. Mike West, Shavaya Brenson, Rob Martin, all with two fouls, unofficially. But, um, you know. Unofficially, but quarter. fairly confidently. Uh, yeah. And, you three know, starters and, and with two fouls in the first quarter is um and what does that do to you as a, as a player and as a team as you get in, in a little bit of foul trouble early does, you it's got to affect the way you play you, you can't play as aggressively you can't you can't reach in you know it definitely affects rob martin's defense for sure and brenson and west down yeah, low the physical low. presence yeah. is important see how that develops You've got eric holmes in now five seconds remaining in the quarter Three-pointer by Scarborough is blocked. Big, block. Big heave by Justice Johnson. That was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be, but still no good. First quarter ends. Nice block by Kyle Henderson. It was. First quarter ends 17-15. to 15. Said really needed the cadets to get off to a fast start. That didn't really happen. They're starting to find it here at the end of the first quarter. Though. Now, however, Hazelwood Central has shot really well. Um, you know, they, they've hit Robert, – Roberts has hit two threes. Um, I believe it was Gowans that hit another one. So they've they've come out shooting well from three-point range, and that's really not their strong suit. It's one of those teams where the scoring is really pretty well distributed yeah, throughout the balanced. team. You know, if you look at CBC, for example, you got Caleb Love averaging, what has he got, 26, 27 a game? Yeah, right around and there. And then you have 26.7. You know, then you got Rob Martin at 10. But uh, for Hazelwood Central, I mean, your team leaders in points, you got Dunn at 11.6. After that, you got 9.3 for Roberts, 9.3 for Nicholson. You know, 7.0 for Cole Farrell and, and Ahmad Scarborough. It's pretty well spread out throughout the roster. So, you know, when you're defending them, there's a lot of guys who can score, theoretically. Right. And good shooters. Yeah. They've 
They've come out making them tonight. You are watching the Cadet Student Network. That was Dan Locke. My name is Tom Eichwald. Randy Gardner is doing the production. James Motes looks like he's getting ready to take the camera for this second quarter from Charlie Bryan, who did a nice job in the first quarter. This is the state, uh, cor correction, this is the uh, sectional game. It's the state quarterfinal on Saturday coming up. And the state hockey championship game is getting going as we speak at Enterprise Center. So definitely go with dual monitors. It is being broadcast on the Blues YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, search St. Louis Blues, go to their channel, and it's being streamed, the Mid-States Championship game. It was going to be broadcast on Fox Sports Midwest, but due to the rescheduled game against Anaheim, it got bumped to and YouTube. Caleb Love drills another three. He's finding it. He likes that other side of the court. He does. Maybe it's the orange shoes. Pass inside. That's good from Nicholson. That was a little too easy. It was. But he's also working against West and Brenson, who are on yeah. two fouls. Love up top. Still working against David Roberts. It is Love, Brenson, West, Hughes, and Martin for the Cadets. Caleb Love, long three, no good. That was way off. It was, pulled in by Gowans. I think the Cadets can get better shots than that. They can. It's Gowan, yeah. Scarborough, Roberts, and Dunn, along with Jaden Nicholson for the Hawks. But I agree, they need to be a little bit more patient. You know, sometimes yeah. when they're trying to establish something, you see some of those shots get forced. They do have yeah. the better set offense. You'd like to see him use it. Martin goes low. Brenson inside, up lay in, easy good. Nice little pump fake to get Dunn off of his feet. Chevalier unable to stop Roberts there with the foul. Are we going to get a travel, travel called? We are. That is against David Roberts. I was a little worried they were going to call Mike West for a foul. I Coach, was. Coach Tatum's getting him out and putting Mikhail Abdul Hamid in. Correct call, though, because the travel did occur prior to the contact. That's right. Six I'd minutes and 34 seconds. I'd like to see them run a play for Mikhail here. Well, Rob Martin to the hoop. Keeps him Big himself. shot for Rob Martin. Good finishing. And we get a timeout, which gives me a chance to calculate the height differential on that finish. Let's see if we can do some quick math on the air. Uh, Robert Martin is 5'10". He went up and over Cole Farrell, who is 6'4". Six-inch height difference, if my math serves. Well, well Tom, when you're, when you're Rob's size, and I was a small guard as well, you, you have to become uh, an effective shot maker inside. You have to get creative with it. During this timeout, we want to ask you, Cadet fans, are you protected? Call State Farm agent and CBC alum Tim Kylo for all your insurance needs. Tim is more than just the best insurance guy in town. He's also the presenting sponsor of CSN, and we're incredibly grateful for his support. Call Tim at 314-842-4442 or send him an email. That's Tim Kylo. That's Tim at TimKylo, K-I-L-O dot com. Cadets with their first lead of the game, 22-19. They started off a little bit slow as Hazelwood West came out, hit their first three-pointer, and went, go, went from there. Bit of a momentum turn right at the end of the first quarter, inside of a minute to go, as a big steal. You know, Caleb Love hit a shot or two, and then you had a big steal and lay-in from Rob Martin. Kind of swung this game back in the Cadets' favor. As Hazelwood Central looks to regain the shooting form that they had early. This is Tevin Gowans. Now Jonathan Dunn. Kicks it out to Cole Farrell. Right-handed finish, no good. Rebound pulled in by Brenson. No reach there. They, find, oh, they do they get do. him. I was going to say, if they don't call a reach there, Cole Farrell gets called for his first. You can imagine Brenson if they didn't call that one saying, really? Yeah, a little upset after the two fouls he's been called for. But uh, it is called. And so far, you know, officiating's been... You know, pretty reasonable. You always look for the balance. Are they going to call everything? Are they going to call nothing? Oh, well, they've, they've been tough uh, break there for Caleb. Pretty much right on for the most part. As Caleb can't get one to go. Now Dunn working against Hughes. Goes inside, and he's going to draw the foul from Larry as he comes in from behind. First foul of the game for Hughes. If I can pull up the hockey game, see what's going on there. Looks like they're just getting set for face-off at uh, Enterprise Center. Coming out for the National Anthem. Cadets wearing those yellow jerseys. No, it's Vianney wearing the yellow jerseys, I would imagine. 
Dunn now one for four from the line tonight. Excellent shooting percentage from the field, but not so much from free throw. Makes the second. 22-20, Cadets. Two-point lead as Brinson brings it up. Who's Vianney in the black uniform, CBC in the yellow? We got our little display here so we can watch the hockey game and keep you updated right here in the booth. All right. So much playoff, so little time. Caleb Love drives. He's going to draw the foul. On Roberts, it looks like. And then a block after the foul, also from Roberts. They do get Roberts with his first. Five minutes, 21 seconds remaining in this first half. Now Love, fade away, no good. A little step back in there good too. Good defense from Roberts. It was, they're making him force it a little bit. Roberts at the other end, can't in get the out. three to go. And then we get a foul called against number 10, Cole Farrell for a block on Brenson. Yeah, that, that was his Farrell's second. That looked like a clean play from here, but we'll take it. In these games, so important to maintain the proper tone as an official. There's always going to be a call or two that you disagree with either way, but most important you know, is to find that balance between letting play yeah. continue, intervening only when necessary. So, uh, so far, the referee's doing a nice it's job. It's been consistent. It has been physical. You can tell both teams won it, but so far, nothing more than that, which is what you'd like to see at athletics at any level, but especially at the high school level. Right. We're going to get a foul called here against Caleb Love. That is his first of the game. And a substitution as Mike West comes in. Hughes and Mikhail Abdul-Hamid make their way off. And Kyle Henderson looks like the other player on for the cadets. So right now it's Henderson, Martin, Brenson, West, and Love for CBC. And for Hazelwood Central, it is Roberts who gets called for the travel along with Caleb Jones, Jonathan Dunn, Nathaniel Garrett, and Tevin Gowans. Under five to go, this is Chevy Brenson. Now Love, he's hit a couple of big shots. Now Br Martin. To There's his what left I wanted side. to see right here. Abdul Hamid for three, just a little bit long. Just a fraction off. Yeah. Mikhail Abdul Hamid is an outstanding three point shooter. 50% plus, I believe. Uh, he's just under 50%, okay. but still. Lay in, no good from Roberts. Rebound pulled in by Brenson. This is Martin. Thinks about taking on three. Instead, Love will do that. Draws the contact. No good, but he'll get two shots. As they're going to give the foul to number five, that is Caleb Jones, first of the game. And Hockey game has faced off. They are just a few seconds into this one. 0-0, CBC against Viani in that one. Again, you can watch that on the St. Louis Blues YouTube channel. Caleb Love's first free throws tonight. In and out. He's hit some big free throws recently. Yes. In the game against DeSmet, you know, come down to the wire, he really needed to hit him. In that game, he was outstanding at the free throw line. He was 14 of 16. It's 87.5% for those of you trying to do the math at home. Team as a whole shot 75% from the line that night. Rarely do you see him miss two in a row. We're going to get a travel call against Gowans under pressure from Justice Johnson. Good defense. Caught a break there. Gowans disagrees. I'm sure some in the stands disagree as well. Four minutes, 14 seconds to go. Cadets still leading by two. Haven't seen any scoring in a while. No, it's been a pretty choppy second quarter so far. Here's Brinson. He's calling the shots. Taking a turn at point guard before he hands it over to Caleb Love. He will be going to North Carolina as a guard, so that's where you'll see him. What a player he is. There it is, as if on cue. Heel Bluff starting to feel shot. it. You can tell he's starting to dial in a little bit. If he can get that three ball working, that would be yeah. like the only thing he would just start making his free throws. Need to do. Roberts. CC in a zone, 2-3. Quick ball movement from Hazelwood Central. 
This is good from CBC, making him work it around. Roberts hits the three. It's his third three tonight from Roberts. 24-23, your score at this point with 3.25 to go. Shafai Brunson long on the three. Gowans. Now lay in up and over Brenson. No good. That was number one, Garrett. And we're going to get a foul called against Roberts. That'll be his second, and that's that's big right now. So Roberts has two, as does Farrell for Hazelwood Central. Still with two for CBC, Brenson, Martin, and West. Larry Hughes and Caleb Love with one apiece. For Hazelwood Central, Garrett, Scarborough, and Jones all with one apiece. And Caleb going to get a chance to redeem himself from the line here with a one and one opportunity. Getting things sorted out over here as Roberts will make way. And coming onto the floor is number four, Jaden Nicholson. In and out. That's three in it's a row. 0 for, for three. I don't know when the last time that happened was. Three minutes to go. Nicholson. Initiates the contact, but they're going to get him on a turnover, double dribble. And that will be a cadet ball. It feels like we've uh, played a lot of basketball for the score, only changing two points for the cadets and three for the Hawks. 24-23 is your score. It's been fairly even. Hazelwood Central started off the game hot from the three-point line. The cadets have slowly fought their way back. They briefly got the momentum at the end of the first quarter, but it's been pretty much dead even since. Oh, there's Rob Martin missing. What a save nice by save Larry. Nice save by Larry. He found Chevy Brenson who kicks it back to Rob Martin. Now Love. Trying to free up the shot. Good defense, though, by number five, Jones. Love drives. He's going to fight through the contact and one. He will go to the line with a chance to make it three. Surely he can't miss four in a row. No. Nope. And that foul is going to be against number five, Jones, his second. And David Roberts has been a huge uh, presence for them offensively, and he's also guarding Caleb Love, and he has two fouls, so he's on the bench. Boy, if you're Love, you go after him every chance you get, don't you? I think you do. So they're not going to want him to get his third before the before – the, uh, halftime. Caleb does knock down the free throw. Completing the three-point play. Unofficially, I have him at 13 points. This is Gowans working against Justin Smith into the game. Intercepted by Hughes Jr. who slips. And they're going to get him out of bounds. Bad break for Larry. Larry has slipped two or three times. That is. I don't know. He's a little confused. He's looking yeah. down at the floor, looking at his shoes. Somebody get the uh, get the towel kit out there. Yeah. Referee checks the surface. Still scoreless in the hockey, in case you're wondering. 11 minutes to go in the first period. Lay in by Scarborough is good. First two points for Ahmad Scarborough. CBC just can't quite pull away here as Love drives. No travel, fights through the contact, and he's going to get back to the line. Scarborough who also has two. So all of a sudden, you got Scarborough, Roberts, Jones, Farrell, all with two fouls apiece, unofficially. Tom Eichwald and Dan Locke bringing you basketball on the Cadet Student Network. Randy Gardner doing production. James Motes on camera at the moment. Charlie Bryan helping as well. Make sure I had the right Charlie there. We got a few Charlies running around CBC these days. Caleb rattles another one out. It's one for five. He's on his knees perplexed. Contemplating the meaning of all things as yeah. the ball just won't go in. I have a good feeling about this one. This one goes in. There it is. Under okay. two minutes to go here in the half. I should say that more often. Seems to work. Right, I won't say it because I usually jinx them. Oh, the age-old question of the announcer's jinx. Is it real? Probably Ooh. not. Is it fun to talk about? Sure. We're going to get a whistle here. Foul called against. Is it? They're going to get Abdul Hamid, I believe. Or no, is that Henderson called with his second? I 
I missed the first one against Henderson, so that's why we call him unofficial. That's that's the one I thought they gave to. Uh, we thought they. I, Maybe I wonder they if they corrected it. it. Right. They must have given. They may have given that to Brenson. Brenson. So Brenson may only have, have one, one foul. foul. We do not know. That was the one at midcourt off the ball. Gowan's making a free throw. Gowan's yellow shoes to match the uniform. Gotta like that. He makes a second one too. Goes two for two from the line. Now Martin. Good defense by Nathaniel Garrett. Picked by Brenson. Gives him a little bit of space. Brent Martin big, looks over, gets the call from the bench. Big Jonathan Dunn on guarding, guarding Rob Martin out high. And Marshawn Sales into the game for the Cadets. Love, Sales, Martin. Frees up Larry Hughes in the corner. No good. As the rebound is pulled in by Dunn. It's Gowans, Garrett, Dunn. Looks like number 11, Jai Graham. And number four, Jaden Nicholson for the Hawks. For the Cadets, it is Love, Brenson, Martin, Sales, and Hughes. One minute, four seconds remaining here in the first half. Cadets holding on to a slender lead. They fell behind in the first quarter, have battled back, but have been unable to pull away. Loose ball pulled in by Central. Gowan's in the corner, good, three-pointer. And the Hawks regain the lead, 30-28. to 28. Love at the other end. Can't get it to go. No. Can't buy one. They're putting a lot of contact on him. We got a loose ball in the corner. And I'm not sure what they're going to say. Timeout taken by the Hawks when they had possession. 35.2 to go. Timeout, Hazelwood Central. East Bay is the official athletic apparel provider of the cadets. They keep our players and coaches looking great on the field, and they want to help you look even better than we're sure you already do. So check out East Bay online, www.eastbay.com, or go online to the athletics website and check out the various team stores that are open. Shameless promotion for the golf program. You can get your CBC golf pullovers, just like uh, certain members of the announcing crew are wearing proudly. As we get set to go in the spring sports season, want to stock up on some CBC baseball gear, maybe volleyball perhaps. We've got it all for you. Lacrosse, so much apparel you can buy if you want from East Bay. So I want to thank East Bay not only for being the official apparel provider, but also for their sponsorship of the Cadet Student Network. It is a two-point game here just before half. Hockey still scoreless, eight minutes to go in the first period. We're watching it in the booth on the St. Louis Blues YouTube channel. You can watch it too. That is the state championship game. CBC and Vianney, MCC matchup. Done, cuts inside here. And we're gonna get a travel. They're gonna get a travel right before Brenson makes contact Jaylen with Nicholson. Nicholson. So the cadets will have it with 27.6 remaining. Bring Martin back in. Didn't want him to pick up his third there with 35 seconds left. In the Brent, half. Brenson, Martin, Love, Hughes, and Abdul Hamid are gonna finish this half out for the cadets, you'd have to imagine. Inside of 20 seconds, gonna look for that shot they want. Maybe Abdul Hamid in the corner with a three or just give the ball to Caleb and let him do it every once. Jai Graham guarding him now, face guarding him. Love drives, draws the contact. He'll get a trip back to the line with 7.9 to go. Gowans. Number zero, Gowans. They're First gonna give five. that to uh, Jai Graham, number Jai 11 Graham, it looks okay. like. So Graham is awarded the foul. And Love will go to the line, which hasn't been his forte tonight, but that one looked a whole lot better. Looked more confident, too. Yeah. He just needed that one to fall. Now he looks a little more relaxed. He does. He's pointing to the clock. Henderson and Smith into the game right now. Defensive substitutions. They're banking on him making this and then just trying to deny points. There you go. Two swishes. There it is. Eric Holmes will check into the game for Caleb Love. And unofficially that uh, puts Caleb at 15. According to the time honored system of uh, a pen and a notebook. Here we go, five seconds to go. Central trying to get one shot. Gowans will get it, the three at the buzzer, no good. Rebound put up by Nicholson, that would have been good, but it's short and off the near rim. First half will end tied at 30. Can't get any closer here at St. Charles West. You are watching the Cadet Student Network. 
We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will get you set for second half action. It's playoff basketball on a big, big night at CBC. Stick around. More to come. CBC alum and State Farm agent Tim Kylo is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Cadet Student Network. For more than 25 years, Tim and his team have helped their clients protect what is most valuable to them, whether it's home, auto, or business. CBC Alumni Hall of Famer Tim Kylo prides himself on his commitment to the CBC community, and he can help protect you and your family too. Give him a call at 314-842-4442 to see how Tim can save you money on your insurance. Learn more online at timkylo.com. Men for Tomorrow, Brothers for Life. We say it often and we take great pride in our commitment to this motto. That commitment has become a part of who we are at CBC. Our brotherhood is well-defined. We see it, we feel it, we experience it every day. It's in the relationships we establish, the moments we share, and the memories we will cherish forever. But what does it mean to be a man for tomorrow? It means that you've prepared your mind, your body, your spirit, and your conscience for anything that life might throw your way. Your experiences at CBC should push you, challenge you, and inspire you to make the world a better place. And after four years, Every cadet who walks across that stage at graduation will be a man who is guided by faith, strengthened by intellect, committed to justice, and prepared to lead and serve. I am a difference maker, oh I am, only one who speaks to him, I am the friendliest of friends of God. At CBC, we win awards, championships, and accolades of all kinds. We love to celebrate together and couldn't be more proud of these accomplishments. But ultimately, our purpose is much greater. CBC is here to develop young men who will go out and make a difference in the world. That's a man for tomorrow. A CBC high school education is about a transformation from boys to men. It's about the formation of a brotherhood that will stand the test of time. It is about service and discovery. It is about coming to understand the world around us and the people that live in it, and ourselves through real life experiences. Welcome to the Innovation Commons here at CPC High School. We're always so excited when our classes meet in this brand new facility. Whether we're building something new, collaborating on a group project, or talking with the guest speaker, this place makes learning fun. There are so many opportunities here. Take a look at what our teachers are doing to make our high school experience so valuable. There's just a shift in education, yeah. a shift in learning to benefit our students. And we're talking about really helping to prepare these students, these young men, to go beyond these walls, then we have to do our due diligence and provide that type of environment. One of the things that we like about the space is 
it, it mimics what's happening in industries, right? So we know that this is a shift not only in the way schools are moving, but the way companies are moving and businesses, and we wanted that kind of authentic experience. Mm -hmm. If we teach <laughs> only what we know, we're doing them a disservice. Good time. We, we gotta yeah. teach them yeah. how to learn on their own because before long they know more than we. One of the first lessons that we teach our guys in uh, freshman leadership class is that everything builds off of character. And then we move into things like commitment and understanding what commitment is truly about and the importance of being seeing something through, having the resiliency to not cave at the first sign of adversity. It takes grit. We're focusing on leading yourself before you can go out and, and lead others and really trying to define what leadership is. It's not necessarily being, you know, captain of a team or, or a club, president of a club. Um, really, it's about um, trying to just impact the world in a positive way. And when the, when the guys walk into this place, there's, there's something that changes. I asked one of my students um, the other day, I said, what, what do you think the difference is? They said, well, when you come in here, you come in here to work. And so this place, just by the very nature of being in here, um, changes the mindset. It changes their way of thinking. CBC alum and State Farm agent Tim Kylo is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Cadet Student Network. For more than 25 years, Tim and his team have helped their clients protect what is most valuable to them. Whether it's home, auto, or business, CBC Alumni Hall of Famer Tim Kylo prides himself on his commitment to the CBC community, and he can help protect you and your family too. Give him a call at 314-842-4442 to see how Tim can save you money on your insurance. Learn more online at timkylo.com. CBC alum and State Farm agent Tim Kylo is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Cadet Student Network. For more than 25 years, Tim and his team have helped their clients protect what is most valuable to them. Whether it's home, auto, or business, CBC Alumni Hall of Famer Tim Kylo prides himself on his commitment to the CBC community, and he can help protect you and your family too. Give him a call at 314-842-4442 to see how Tim can save you money on your insurance. Learn more online at timkylo.com. Welcome back, everybody. We are in the booth. Tom Eichwald and Dan Locke bringing you cadet basketball at halftime, 30 to 30, as the teams take the floor again. Dan, just some general thoughts on what we saw in the first quarter, or in the first half. In the first half, uh, Tom. Sorry, we've got to adjust a camera here. Dan, take it away. Okay. Um, yeah, in the first half, you know, it was uh, first quarter started out, didn't really go CBC's way. Um, they got down early, but were able to scrap back by the end of the first quarter and take the lead. However, in the second quarter, it was uh, a lot of fouls and, and missed free throws and kind of just a choppy second quarter. So, Suck a little bit to kind of tell the story of the momentum in this game. It was Hazelwood Central getting off to the fast start, nailing those early threes. But it was right at the very end of that first quarter when you had the you know, steal by Rob Martin, he, the putback. And it really kind of turned in CBC's favor right at the end of the quarter there. But then some of the steam came out, and it was just a, a little bit of a sloppy yeah. back and forth. Yeah, and there was a lot of fouls in the second quarter. Um, you know, Caleb he had some misfortune at the line tonight. It looks like he's corrected it, corrected that. Um, and, and he's also had some uh, uh, tough shots around the rim that have gone in and out. Um, so, yeah, I could see this being a different ball game. Um, but here in the second half, uh, CBC's got, they've got a couple guys in foul trouble, and, and so do Hazelwood Central. So 
I think, you know, both teams are going to be playing aggressively, so it's going to come. This game could come down to free throws, likely will. Even with that misfortune, though, Caleb Love still with 18, 18 points. 18 points, yeah. He has 18, Shavaya Brenson with three, Rob Martin with seven, and Mike West with two. We are getting set for the third quarter here. This is not the only CBC action going on tonight as the hockey team is playing in the Mid-States Championship game at Enterprise Center with 40 seconds remaining in the first period. one nothing in favor of the Griffins of Viani. They scored uh, here in the first period. Uh, not watching it closely enough to be able to tell you who scored or exactly how much time was left. But CBC trails in the hockey game one to nothing and they certainly have their hands full tonight on the court at St. Charles West. Tom Eichwald, Dan Locke, we've got Randy Gardner doing production. Actually, right now he's just watching hockey. And then James Motes on the camera, Charlie Bryan helping out tonight. I think he's reading the comments on a YouTube broadcast. That's a dangerous endeavor, Randy. Both teams are out on the floor, and we begin the third quarter. It is Martin, Brenson, Hughes, West, and Love, the starting lineup for CBC. And for Hazelwood Central... I'll tell you them in a second. Here's Brenson. Goes up for the one-handed shot. No good. Rebound ends up in the hands of Garrett, who has alongside of him Gowans, Roberts, Dunn, and Farrell. Mentioned the foul trouble a little bit at halftime. Starting the second half, unofficially, we have Garrett with one, Scarborough with two, Roberts with two, Jones with two, Farrell with two, and Jai Graham with one for Hazelwood Central. Long three from Garrett is good off the backboard. To finish the point, CBC's foul situation, Rob Martin with two, Kyle Henderson with two, Mike West with two, Larry Hughes with one, Caleb Love with one, and we think Chevalier Brenson with one, as we think one might have been corrected. Brenson with the dunk. That one counts for two. We know that. End-to-end -end action here. It is, and we're going to get a foul at the other end with some shots at the line. Who are they going to get? Looks like 23. They're going to Mike get Mike West. West with his third of the game. Only a minute here into the third period. At the line is Cole Farrell. He hits his first. On the season, in case you're wondering, Cole Farrell is 60% free throw shooter. Hazelwood Central generally a, a very good shooting team. A lot of guys in 70%, above 60% on the uh, free throw shooting. Second one goes in and out. This is Martin. Now Brenson, Martin. Martin is working against Farrell. Caleb Love, long three, no good. Rebound pulled in by Dunn authoritatively. This is Farrell. He's got Gowans. Gowans doesn't take a whole lot of shots, but he's a heck of a ball handler. Roberts, Gowans, Farrell. Realized that ball was coming to him midway through its flight and still got his hands on it. That is out off of Caleb Love's fingertips. Hawk ball underneath. Hazelwood Central wearing those all yellow uniforms. They are going left to right across their screen. The cadets in the all white are trying to stop him and take it back the other way. Roberts to inbound. Finds Dunn in the corner. Now Gowan's up top working against Rob Martin. Point guard on point guard. Taking the shot as Farrell, but it's short. short. Rebound pulled in by Hughes, who finds Brenson. Nice job by Hughes to keep it on the court. Martin for three. Looks good. It is. That's Rob Martin at his 10th point. Nice three. We had a great view of that. You probably had on your camera, too. That thing never left the center of the net. Nice shot, makes it 35-34, restores CBC's lead. We get a timeout. Great hustle play at the other end by Larry to save that one. That's the second And the awareness to that. find yeah. a pass as he's fallen out of bounds. I mean, everybody's seen, wide, basket. Yeah. everybody's seen a wide receiver in football, you know, catch the ball and, and keep his feet in bounds. That's what Larry did. But then instead of just falling, he's got to look around and find a pass, and he's got the presence of mind to do it. And, folks, Larry Hughes, just a sophomore, it's a kid you really want to keep your eye on. Absolutely. Shot not going down tonight, but you got to keep him out there for his defense. Yet, yet. Shot not falling yet. He is yet. a heck of a three-point shooter as well. He's shooting, I believe, about 35% on the season for three. CBC in that 2-2-1 two -two press. It's first line of all ones, Rob Martin and Larry Hughes. Second line of Brenson and Love. And then 
Mike West all the way back. In the corner, Roberts wide open three, no good. Rebound hauled in by Brenson. Good Here's pass. Martin off and running. Goes up for the shot. A little too much touch as it's short. Recovers it. He does. Oh. And Mike, Mike West unaware of that pass. It is off of Hazelwood Central. CBC get a break. Yeah. You know, it hasn't been pretty at all the time, but uh, sure is an entertaining game of basketball. Yeah, that's for sure. Edwards, that might have been his first miss from three tonight. No good from Love. And he draws the foul. He has drawn a lot Actually, of fouls I underneath. Think Brinson got the foul on that on the on the putback. So the foul is charged against Cole Farrell. Picks up his third. He and West, the only two players in this game with three fouls. Sends Brinson to the line. First one is good. Chevalier two for three tonight. Substitution as Nicholson comes in. He will replace Farrell. The almost obligatory third foul substitution. Shabaya can knock this down. Let's see if CBC can set up the press. He does. And they do. And they do. Martin and Henderson now the first line. Hughes and Brentson the second line. Caleb Love all the way back. A little bit different look. Gowans. Nicholson from the three free throw line. No good. Pulled in by Hughes. 5-24. Hughes for three. No good. He rattles it off the rim. As you mentioned, can't quite dial it yeah, in. But that's the shot you want. He was open. It is. And he's the guy you want taking it. Got a tip. Martin behind the back. Loses it to Gowans. Point guard to point guard. Henderson is going to get called with the foul as he blocks him out. And that is Henderson's third. So Kyle has three. So that's two players for the cadets with three fouls. Mike West and Kyle Henderson. So you see the half court trap here. And bring him over to this near side. Good foot work by CBC to close it down, but they're beaten by Garrett who lays it in. I was about to say they closed him down, shut him down nicely, yeah. but Garrett, what a nice move. They've handled the pressure well. They really do, love. Against three, up and in, he'll get a chance to add one more. Caleb is going to drive every single time, and he's going to get fouled every single time, but he knows that, and he's still doing it. Garrett picks up his second. Or are they giving that to Roberts? They're giving that to Roberts. So, so correction, yeah. apologies to the Garrett family. Nathaniel Garrett only has one. David Roberts picks up his third. Farrell and Roberts have been the primary garters of Caleb Love tonight, and they've both got three fouls. And by all accounts, it looks like Caleb is aware of that fact because yeah. he is targeting them. Are they getting Kyle again or, or for another? No, is that Martin, number one? That is Rob Martin. Martin. Henderson wasn't far away, but they give that one to Rob Martin, his second, uh, his Wait, third. No, they They've only got him for they got him for two or three? Two. They have him at two. And also with two is Viani, who just scored to take a 2-0 lead over CBC in the state final hockey game. So they are saying that is Rob Martin's second. Hazelwood Central in the man to man D. Edwards still out there guarding Caleb Love. This is Love for three. Good. Could use Caleb a few more Love. of those. He's stepping it up here in the second half. He started the half with 18. I'm not going to put Dan on the spot to see if he's keeping track. He's got 24. Nicholson loses it to Martin, who fights through some contact. Now Justice Johnson, Brenson. Brenson drives. Big block by Nicholson. And it goes to Roberts. Roberts behind the back, loses it out to Justice Johnson. We're running wind sprints. Kyle Henderson's going to go up. Big Lock. block by Garrett, who goes the other way. Nathaniel Garrett underneath. This is Nicholson. Waits. 
Puts it up, no good. Contact from Henderson and he's gonna get called for a foul. That is his fourth. End to end action here and CBC giving a lot of second chance opportunities to Hazelwood Central. Three nothing Vianney, what is going on over there at Enterprise Center? As Vianney is up to a three to nothing lead. With 324 remaining. Four, 324 remaining in this basketball game. There's 1134 to go in the second period of hockey, but 324 here of basketball in, in the, the third, third quarter. quarter. 43-38 is the cadet lead. Justice Johnson slips, regains his footing, must be slick down there. This is Caleb Love. Guarded by Dunn. Love for three. Good! Knocks another one down. Caleb He's is absolutely hot. taking over this ball game. Timeout taken by Hazelwood Central as they figure out how to respond to this. Got him unofficially at 27 points. In the third quarter. He had 35 when these two teams met in January, as we take a break, I want to ask you if you're looking uh, perhaps for a way to raise money for a school, a team, or organization, I want to tell you about TJ's Pizza. They offer you a simple process to help you raise money by selling delicious pizzas and desserts. Call TJ's or look them up online, www.tjspizza.com. Thank you, TJ's. Also, Mercy Sports Medicine. Mercy is a top-tier Catholic health system nationally. And they offer great quality service to our cadet student athletes. Our trainer, Kristen Jeans, takes great care of the boys. And Mercy would love to take care of you if you need it, which we hope you don't. But uh, to learn more, visit www.mercy.net. And while I'm on a roll, I will also tell you, this is the last one, I promise. Chick-fil-A is the official chicken sandwich of the Cadet Student Network. So if you're looking for a tasty post-game meal or maybe hopefully a pre-game meal on Saturday on your way to Lindenwood, Stop by Chick-fil-A. Our favorite location is on Manchester, just east of Ball Ballas Road. Thank you, Chick-fil-A. We got a lot going on. We got a hockey game here. We got a basketball game. We got ads. We got thinking about chicken sandwiches now. Got me hungry. Was it the uh, hot, delicious TJ's pizza <laughs> or the hot, delicious Chick-fil-A that was getting you, getting you hungry? I think it was the Chick-fil-A. Dipped in that uh, delicious end. dipping sauce that they have, or your choice of a. Or it's Johnson who takes a nudge from Scarborough. That will be his third foul as well. I think they got him on the floor there. Yeah, the shot did not count as Larry Hughes checks in for Mike West. Now fouls are, are really becoming a story. Could be the story down the stretch. In the third quarter, you got Scarborough, Roberts, and Farrell unofficially with three. And on the cadet side, you have Henderson with three and West with three. Brenson with two. I've got Brenson up, no good. I've got Kyle at four. Kyle does have four. You're, uh, you're right. Very refined system for keeping track of these things up here. Ball is lost. Hendri or, uh, Brenson recovers with 2.38 to go in the third quarter. Crowd responding to every move. A great crowd it is here at St. Charles West, the home of the Warriors. That's Garrett getting called for the foul. Two minutes, 28 seconds remaining in the quarter. 46-38 is your score. It's about as big a lead as the cadets have had tonight. And here Aaron comes pass. Dunn. Brenson oh. pokes it out, and they're going to get him with a foul. They're going to say he reached in. They have been calling that on everybody tonight. That is Brenson's third. See, they're saying second up on the board. Oh. I've got it as his third. Okay, well... You know, that was the one they I took away from him and awarded to, to Kyle, West. Or, 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 Mike, Kyle Henderson? We're all confused. Or, yeah. I don't know what's going on. We yeah. had him as, at three fouls. They've got him at two officially, so we'll go with the official book. Uh, if that changes later, we'll let you know, but Dunn is at the line either way. And Dunn misses the first, and he struggles from the line, so this could turn out to be a good foul. It is Dunn, Caleb Jones, Jai Graham, Gowans, and Garrett for the Hawks. This is the second as well. Big rebound by Caleb Love. And Love has Brenson, Martin, Hughes, and Justice Johnson alongside of him. This is Rob Martin, the sophomore point guard. Sensational sophomore point guard. Have Caleb Jones now guarding Caleb Love. Brenson. Caleb Love. 
Two minutes remaining in this third quarter. Love trying to free up a shot, draws a tri triple team. Finds Larry Hughes all the way over to Justice Johnson. Open three, good! Justice Johnson. You don't you know, see him with to take a lot of threes. You know, he must have been inspired because he must have heard that CBC just scored in the hockey game to make it 3-1 now. Dunn puts it up at the other end. So Jonathan Dunn makes it 49-40 with a minute 35 remaining in this third quarter. Dunn, Dunn's been quiet since the first quarter. He has. He's the team's leading scorer coming into this one. He had 15 in that district final against Hazelwood West. Now Love, working against three. Up and no good, but again he draws the foul. Blocking foul. And they're gonna get five, Caleb that is Jones. Jones, his third. So Caleb's tactic of just driving in and making you foul him continues. I don't wanna say it, but Love struggled early from the free throw line. Seems to have steadied things a bit. I always want yeah. to see him make one after you say that. Yeah. Makes the lead 10. If memory serves, first double digit lead of the night. For sure. Yeah, this one's been tight. CBC outscoring Hazelwood Central 21 to 10 here in this third quarter with a minute 14 left. Jones. Is he going to, oh, travel, travel I was going to say. I thought they were going to get uh, Kyle oh. Henderson with the trip, but they don't. And CBC scores again. So the state hockey game is now Viani 3, CBC 2, with 8 minutes and 19 seconds to go. The cadets clawing back. The cadets don't claw, but the folks get the, uh, get the imagery, I imagine. One minute to go here in the basketball game. Before you know it, we'll be doing play-by-play -play of both sports up here, and that's just a little much, so we'll try to keep it uh, to a minimum. But I'm going to let you do that, Tom. <laughs> it is exciting. We're going to give it a try if we need to. An overtime scenario or something. Garrett drives. He's going to fight through the contact. I thought they were Rob Martin for tries to say that was on the floor, but it was not. They're going to get Justice Johnson with the foul. His first. That is the fifth team foul for the Cadets, matching the five for the Hawks here in the second quarter or second half. Love pulls up an uncontested rebound, easiest one he'll have all night. That was a one and one. And he, the he only one the to react was Love. Yeah. Under 40 seconds to go here in the third oh, no, quarter. I'm sorry, they got a bucket there. It was an and one. Martin. Love from the corner, no good. Highlight real stuff if that goes in, but Brenson puts it back. Ah, yeah, Brenson, big makes, put back. Makes it 11 with 15 seconds to go. Hazelwood Central may get one shot away here before the end of the quarter. They got 10 seconds to do it. Good pass. Dunn goes up, puts it in. Now CBC takes over with five. This is Love, three seconds, long three. He goes it! Caleb Love right at the end of the quarter makes it 12 points for the Cadets. 56-44, the largest lead of the night for either team. What a momentum boost that is heading into the fourth Unofficially, quarter. Unofficially, we have Caleb Love with 32 points going into the fourth quarter here, folks. Well, he's three points away from matching what he did against Hazelwood Central the first time around this season. And... Didn't get off to the best start in this game. He, he was very kind of hot or cold in that first half, and in the first quarter. Free throws and in, in the second quarter. The second quarter, he started to pick up. He missed those free throws, improved since then. And in this second half, third quarter especially. He's love hit it. three threes in here in the second quarter I've, and scored 14 points. Um, so, yeah, it's been the Caleb Love show here in the third quarter. Also, some other noteworthy plays, that big three by Justice Johnson. He doesn't get to take a lot of those shots. Um, what a boost that is for a young yeah. man coming in. You know, Justice yeah. Johnson comes into this game. Um, you know, one of the younger players on the team. Not a whole lot of uh, you know varsity minutes really, you know, com especially compared to some of the other guys he's coming in for. Uh, he got a big steal, and then also hit that three pointer. So 
he had a nice third quarter. He's gonna get he's gonna get to start the fourth. I like to see that. One more quarter of basketball here at St. Charles West. On the line is a trip to the sectional game that will be at Lindenwood University, we think, on Saturday. And just to update you folks, the score of that game at halftime was Francis Howell, who's 27 and one, is beating Fort Zumwalt North 46 to 24. Johnson takes it, and then Martin will put it back. The steals starting to become a trend in this game as well. They really have been a trend for a while. Both teams play very good defense. Now Jones, all the way across for Gowans. Underneath, this is Graham. Quick ball movement now for Hazelwood Central. Graham gets love up in the air. And he's going to down it. Draw the foul from Johnson, I believe. That is correct. So Justice Johnson called with his second foul of the game. That will send Jai Graham to the line with 7.29 to go here in the game. Graham with a chance to complete the three-point play. We hope you're watching both this and the hockey game, but in case you are not, CBC trailing 3-2. to two. They were down 3-0 here in the second period, but they have gotten back to within a goal with about five minutes remaining in the second period down at Enterprise Center. Maybe you're waiting to see this game and then turn on the rest of that one. Well, we hope you enjoy this finish too. Tom Eichwald and Dan Locke on the Cadet Student Network bringing you the Cadets in those all-white uniforms going against the Hawks in the all-yellow. Hughes from the corner, no good. Rebound pulled in by Love, but they're going to get him over the back. No, I think no, they're, they're going to get Gowans for the push. Not everybody's happy about that one. No, it looked like a clean box out, but he might have had too much contact there. They're going to say he undercut him a little bit, made it dangerous? Yeah. I don't know how he couldn't undercut him. He's not that tall, and Caleb Love's big and jumps eight, eight high. Inches, so. Eight inches taller. Seven minutes to go. Love with the spin move. Up and good. Wow. Caleb Love is feeling it. He is. Unofficially 34. Yep. Tie Roberts. Up. We have a yeah. jump ball, but the whistle went before it. Nobody yep. wants to give that one up. Roberts comes out of there. They call a jump, or are they going to call a foul? It was Justice Johnson in the middle. I think the whistle went. They go jump ball. I thought the whistle okay, went great. before the jump ball, but nice job by Justice Johnson to jump in there, sacrifice his body, get in the middle of a little bit of a scrum there just to get the ball back. It'll be Brenson inbounding to Martin. We get a whistle here. We have a timeout or maybe something off the ball. Love and Gowans. Maybe uh, get a substitution. Exchanging plans for after the game, I don't know. Uh, as Dunn comes into the game for Jai Graham. You gotta love Gowans going against a guy who's got him by eight inches, not backing yeah. down an inch. Chevalier hits Edwards with a hard pick. Now, you do have to love that matchup, but you do have to love the spirit of Gowans. He's oversized. Are you allowing that undersized. matchup to continue? That's the thing. Yeah, he just he's just gonna get call, he got called for a blocking foul, and Caleb's gonna try and take him down low and muscle him every time. Yeah, and that's the second straight possession where he's been guarding. He's got quick feet, you get it, but is he, that an intended matchup or is somebody out of position? And he's the nearest guy twice in a row. Like no, I can't. They're playing man to man. Um, they've got Edwards off the ball guarding uh, Rob Martin, who's bringing it up, and I just. I mean, the only thing I can fouls. think is you're trying to protect guys from fouling out at this point in the game. Well, it's getting out of control, though, and they're down. You figure down Caleb's going to score anyway. You might as well not get one of your bigs fouling out. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. It's 36 for Caleb. And timeout taken by CBC. Six minutes, 40 seconds to go. The Cadets are up by the biggest lead they have had tonight. That is 16 points here in basketball. At the Enterprise Center, the Hockey Cadets are trailing 3-2 to the Golden Griffins of Vianney with 2.46 to go in that second period. That game, in case you're wondering how we know all this stuff about the hockey game, we're watching it in the booth. It is on the YouTube channel of the St. Louis Blues. It was supposed to be on Fox Sports Midwest, but due to the rescheduling of the game in Anaheim, the game where uh, Jay Bowmeister collapsed, uh, that game is being played tonight. So Fox Sports Midwest takes the Blues game, and the Blues were kind enough to offer their YouTube channel for the Mid-States Championship Games. That's where you can find it. Go to YouTube, search St. Louis Blues, and right there, if you go to their channel, you will see the 2020 Mid-States State Championship Game between CBC and Vianney. 
boy, how basketball would love a return trip to the state final four. But uh, they got some work to do to finish this one off. They're starting to look better and better as the game has gone on. It's been a grind, which all of their postseason games yeah. have been so far. Well, that's really Looks good. It's a little better than it did really good maybe about 30 quarter. minutes ago. Yeah, really good third quarter. And uh, they've got a 16 point lead, so. To start the fourth quarter, it will be Johnson, Martin, Brenson, Hughes, and Love for the Cadets. And for Hazelwood Central, it will be Gowans, Jones, Roberts, Garrett, and Dunn. CBC with that 2 2 1 press, full court. Edwards and Gowan trying to bring it up. There's a steal by Justice Johnson. Picked off by Johnson. He's been good tonight. Now Dunn drives. Larry Hughes with the block. Still done. He finally gets some help from Roberts all the way across. Good Ooh. grab by Jones to pull that one in. And they reset with Gowans. Now Garrett defended by Hughes. Some handsy defense, but he fights through it. Brenson pulls in the rebound. All the way down, he's looking for another, love. Another turnover there by the Cadets. There's Edwards, the three. Can't get it to go. This is Rob Martin. He's working against David Roberts. 5.52 to go. Love. They're starting to double team him. Draws contact, fights through, good. Made sure the video crew got that one down on the court. Dunn up, no good. Back over his head, back to goal. And he puts that one in. Impressive finish there by Dunn. And we get a timeout taken. 5.36 remaining, 64-48. If you are Hazelwood West, what adjustments do you need to try to get back in this game? Well, they are disconnected defensively, and that's why Caleb Love's getting to the hoop whenever he wants. I mean, DeSmet did a really nice job on him, not allowing him to get, get to the bucket whenever he wanted. He's doing that tonight. Um, you know, I'll get handed to DeSmet. They have some, some bigs inside, so who alter shots. And, and, and Hazelwood Central has a couple of big guys inside too, but they just seem to be a little bit disconnected there on the defensive end because they're playing a straight man-to-man. -man. And it's almost, you know, we've seen them, of course, you, you want to protect some of these guys with foul mm -hmm. trouble. You have to imagine that game's up as you start the fourth quarter. I'm sorry, is it 536 to yeah. go? You know, and you're uh, 16 points down. You really have to fight back. So you, you got to imagine that we're going to see them toss, you know, guys like Roberts and Farrell against Caleb Love. Even yeah. though they're on three fouls, Caleb Jones is on three fouls. But, uh, you know, you got to do it at some point. Yeah. We've seen them maybe a little bit cautious to do that. You got to imagine they're going to start here they're soon. They're starting a full court press here. 2-2-1 two, two, as well. Justice, Justice Johnson, Johnson mishandles. Jones. And they have one. Got Justice with the. Yeah, they did. Foul there. It was a nice drive there by Cole Farrell. Justice Johnson called with his. Let's see, third foul, I believe. Yes, you're right. And that will send Farrell to the line. Rattles the first one out. 60% shooter from this spot, so you'd favor him. The odds favor him on this one. And you're right. There we go. Now Martin is working against Farrell. Sensor with the press. Good drive by Rob Martin through the legs of Justice Johnson. Of Justice Johnson. CBC couple, a little sloppy with the passing yeah, here. A couple of turnovers there. Three, actually. In a row. And that's the kind of stuff you can't have right now. You're, no. you're playing well. You're, you're, your star player is feeling it. You just got to be, you, know, you don't, you you don't want to force passes. Yeah. Love contact with Roberts. Roberts for three. Good. That's Roberts for three of the, the game. It is. Just like that, deficit back to 12. Under five minutes to go. Martin. Working against Farrell, now he's got Justice Johnson. They're gonna get Caleb Love the ball and let him they are. isolate here. He's being guarded by Roberts again. Finds Hughes in the corner. Larry. Good, Larry Hughes Jr. puts one in. Another big three by Larry Hughes, a momentum shifter, potentially. Farrell, big block by Brenson. That was the momentum shift in the DeSmet game. 
Was a block by Chevalier Brenson. This time all it gets him is another foul yeah, on is Farrell. A... Or on uh, against Farrell, yeah. So Farrell so, back to the line. Now what do they call that? They call that Chevalier Brenson's third. So that means that uh, they awarded one to him that they later took off the board. So that is, we think, officially his third, according to the scoreboard up there. End of the second period. It is 3-2 Viani as they come clear the ice. That is in the state championship hockey game over on the St. Louis Blues YouTube channel. It's going on right now at the Enterprise Center. We are at St. Charles West here on the Cadet Student Network bringing you what is currently a 15-point lead with four minutes and 19 seconds to go for the Cadets over the Hawks of Hazelwood Central, a trip to sectional on the line. Brenson underneath, and he's going to get called with the travel. It will be Hawk ball. Need to make something happen on the next few possessions. Yeah. Even if it's taking time off the clock, you know, at this point, but Quick turnovers are not, not the answer. This is David Roberts for the Hawks. Now Gowans, back to Roberts. They've got Farrell, Jones, and Dunn alongside of them. This is Farrell, fights through the physicality of Mike West. Nice, for a layup. Nice left-hand finish there by Farrell. Now Caleb Love. Finds Justice Johnson on the outlet. Martin drives. He's going to dish it underneath to Brenson, and Love will reset up top. And here's what I mean about taking time off the clock. And there you go. Give it to Caleb, and he's got 40. Too easy. What a second half he is having. Really kind of exploded in that third quarter, and it has continued here in the fourth. As Dunn and the Hawks try to find something. Fight back. We get contact between West wow. and Dunn. Looked like Dunn kind of lowered his shoulder there, but Mike West, a hard man to move. They give that foul to Mike West. Mm -hmm. It's going to be his fifth. That is, they have it as his fourth on the board. If that is his fifth, they haven't put it up there, but I think okay. they're counting that as his fourth. Again, we apologize for some of the discrepancies on the fouls. A lot of gyms, they have the, the board that keeps track of fouls where you can see it at all times. If you miss it when they flash it up there, you don't see it again. So, And they have made some changes. They have made some changes to him. So we have that as the fourth foul of Mike West. He's got four. Kyle Henderson has four. Chevalier Brenson with three. Justice Johnson with three. And over on the Hazelwood side, Roberts with three, Caleb Jones with three, and Cole Farrell with three. All of those are unofficial numbers. Done second one, no good. This is both. Love pulls it in. And Central has struggled from the line here in the second half. Rob Martin, Justice Johnson, Brinson, Caleb Love. He gets tripped up. And are they gonna get Roberts on this one? They are. So David Roberts quickly picks up his fourth. He was frustrated with this one, but Caleb Love went over his foot. And they call him on a trip with 2.55 to go. Substitution as Garrett, Nathaniel Garrett comes in for Jonathan Dunn. Coach Gilmore deciding to leave Edwards in as he has been their best three point shooter tonight. And we only have 2.55 left here. So they need to get something going. 69-54 is the score. And it has been the Caleb Love Show here in the second half. You are watching the Cadet Student Network. My name is Tom Eichwald. Dan Locke alongside me providing the analysis. We've got Randy Gardner running production. We've got Charlie Bryan doing the camera work. Caleb Love James misses. Motes up here as well. It was Roberts on the three, no good. Rebound makes good. its way eventually to Chevalier Brenson. Now Love's going to drive, we have to imagine. And do they get him on the charge? They do. So Love called with the charge. 
Now they've corrected that too because they're calling that his first foul. I had that as his second based on the announcements nice made that. earlier. So that one was a, another correction. So I guess that's the first for Caleb Love. I don't think that's going to matter. Brinson and Jones pull it in simultaneously. And that will be a jump ball. And it will go to the Hawks. That was Garrett missing the three. Hawks need somebody to inbound it. That would help. Garrett will do it. It's Garrett, Jones, Gowans, Edwards. And who is that over there? It looks like Farrell. Going to get Larry with the foul there. Yep, they are. As he sent Jones to the floor. That is Larry Hughes' second foul. That one checks out according to the board. We got one right. I think so, yeah. Calling it a two-shot foul. So a chance to pull back within 13 if they can hit both of these, but uh, you got to imagine they've riding maybe on the wall for the Hawks. I at don't this have point. the numbers here, but they've been really, really struggling from the line here in the second half. Jones gets a second after he rattles the first one out. No good on this that one either. Just wow. didn't look comfortable. Wasn't no. a smooth motion. It nope. looked uh, forced, a little tense. Now Brenson. Contact from Roberts, and that will be his fifth, I think. I have that as his fifth as he just grabbed on to Brenson. They know they need to foul. And that is the fifth, so the evening ends and the high school career ends for number three, David Roberts. As for the last time, he gets applause from this Hazelwood Central fan section. Had a good game tonight. David Roberts played really, really well tonight. He had a hard job coming in. Yeah, you, you knew the fouls were always going to be there when you're going up against Caleb Love. Yeah. And a, you know, the, the last game in January, there were a lot of fouls in, so you knew that was going to be a part of it. And, Probably weren't going to finish the game with all the players he started with. That's right. That sends Brenson to the line. If you're going to send somebody to the line, that would be the guy. Now Jones. Justice Johnson picks his pocket. Another and steal and throw away. Off of Rob Martin's fingertips. And out of bounds. Another turnover. May not prove to matter, but you don't want to keep giving the no. opportunities. To the Hawks in case they can the get hot with threes and make yeah. you nervous and you miss a few free throws and all of a sudden you're sweating. Garrett up for two. Good. Nathaniel Garrett. It's Rob Martin. Tried to foul. They don't. Got Brenson. Brenson draws the contact. No foul given against Ahmad Scarborough, but Brenson puts it in anyway. 71-56. Cadets starting to pull away a little. Scarborough. Pull away in the corner. Air ball to Brenson, and Brenson is going to be fouled by Jones. And Jones had tried to do the same thing to Rob Martin on the other side, the play before, and the rest didn't see it. Jones picks up his fourth. And some of the black and yellow in this arena is making its way to the exits. Shavaya Brenson at the line yet again. That was the fourth foul for it was uh, number five, Caleb Jones. They do a double take on my roster there. Substitutions, Justin Smith comes in. Scarborough makes his way out for the Hawks. Shavaya Brenson knocking down the first one, extending that lead to 16. He'll get another one. It's Brenson, Love, Hughes, Martin, and Smith for the Cadets. Hits both of them. And who's that I see uh, heading for the exits? That's MJ Anderson, CBC football player, alumnus, and currently playing for the uh, Golden Gophers up in Minnesota. Nice to see MJ, and I uh, saw Julian Williams here with him. State champion football player at CBC. Justin Smith takes hard contact from Jones. Are they not going to call that a foul? He got his hand on the ball, but the elbow to the face of Justin Smith. Smith looks like he is okay. Went do down they, hard. Do they give the foul? They didn't initially. It looked like they might have stopped it for a head injury. And are they going to send Jones to the line here? I think they are. 
I did not see the foul. They gave it as, I think, Rob Martin's third, if I'm reading the scoreboard correctly. So there must have been a foul off the ball. Most importantly, Justin Smith looks like he is okay. As the Hawks free throw woes continue. Nathaniel Garrett will make way. Coming into the game, McKinley Williams, the freshman guard. Jonathan Dunn makes his way off the floor as well. I was about to say, it looks like an awful lot of yellow shirts out there. There were six for a moment. Who else is into the game? Looks like Jai Graham came in with 1.19 to go. Foul Chevalier Brenson as he pushes the freshman McKinley Williams out of the way. Brenson will pick up his fourth, we think. This is one of those that's been a little funky tonight, but I think we're back on, and that's four fouls for Chevalier. It is. Third period getting underway in state hockey in just a few minutes. And I believe that is CBC alum Patrick Kelly on the call. Son of John Kelly is dead. McKinley Williams knocks down the first free throw in a while for the Hazelwood Central Hawks. Is that not Patrick Kelly? That is Patrick Kelly along with not sure who that broadcast partner is, but anyway, hockey's about to get going in the third quarter. Basketball, 73-57 with a minute 13 to go. Talked myself into a hole there, so I'll talk quickly so they forget about it. Justin Smith, he's got Love, Martin, Henderson, and Brenson alongside of him with a minute five to go. Smith can't pull it in. It's taken away by Jones, who's quickly fouled by Justin Smith, and that will send Jones to the line again with a minute to go. CBC been a little careless with the ball here in the, sec in, the, in the fourth quarter, for sure. And have been bailed out, quite frankly, by uh, Hazelwood Central's free throw shooting. They well, have. This could be a lot closer. Well, and they've presented the opportunities. You mentioned the turnovers. You know, some fouls that really weren't necessary. Right. You know, that, that foul You're from Justin Smith there, really you don't need yeah. to go for yeah. that. You know, every stoppage really benefits Hazel the Hawks, unless right. you figure that they're more likely to make a layup than two free throws, right. and it's just a calculated risk, which is very possible. Jones rattles it out. Love with the rebound. Still Caleb Love. Going to draw contact, gets it knocked out of bounds. I think that was the freshman McKinley Williams who knocked it out of Caleb Love's hands. I imagine he'll tell that story a few times. Yeah. Caleb Love. Oh, you, you North Carolina? I, I took care I of him. ball from him? Yeah. <laughs> And he had 40 points. Yeah, but before he came on the floor. That's right. He can't be held responsible for that. We get a foul called, I think, against who Caleb is that? Jones. That is McKinley Williams. McKinley, McKinley Williams. Williams first, number 33, the player we're talking about, the freshman. 46.3 to go. The arena significantly more empty than it was just about 20 minutes ago or so. No good from Martin. Sets up a matchup, you would have to imagine, with Francis Howell. Francis Howell, who's, if, uh, who's going to be 28 and 1 versus CBC, which was last year's Final Four matchup. 43 seconds to go. Gowans for three. No good. Rebound pulled in by Farrell. Fadeaway is good. Timeout taken by Hazelwood Central, who are not giving up. 14 points down with 34 seconds to go. They're going to talk it over. So let's talk a little bit about that matchup with Francis Howell. Two programs, you know, strong not just in basketball, but in a lot of different sports. You know, if CBC does hold on, which is looking likely that they will, what can we expect from that game? That is going to be a great game, folks, to tune into. Francis Howell is very good. CBC played them in the final four game last year to get to the state championship trailed the entire game um, till about the last two or three minutes and were able to win and some misfortunes for Francis Hall North they had some guys foul out and one of their starters get hurt but they've only lost one game this year they're 28 and one so it's going to be they've got a lot of returning players from last year and I think anybody that tunes in or comes out to watch the game is going to be treated with a real surprise CBC is, uh, we don't know what's going on in that other game, but it's certainly looking likely with the halftime score. CBC is 34 seconds away from that sectional matchup. Or, correction, 
quarterfinal. from the state quarterfinal matchup. So this is the sectional for Clarity. And then the quarterfinal would be CBC versus Francis Howell for the right to go to the final four. Rob Martin, left-hand dribble. Now Justin Smith, the cadet's just going to ride this one out. And Justin Smith is going to get called for the travel under pressure from Gowans. Cadets just aren't going to make this comfortable, are they? No. They don't need to foul here, I can tell you that. Applause for the seniors of Hazelwood Central. As the shot from Jones is no good, majestic put back there by Farrell. CBC in no hurry to inbound this. Five seconds to go. The clock's still running, and the clock will expire. CBC holds on. 74-62. They fought off an early surge from Francis Howell. And a big third Central, quarter yeah. from, from Hazelwood Central. Central. Getting ahead Sorry, of myself yeah. here. And a big third quarter from Caleb Love really is the difference in this game. Right. Caleb Love came out in the, in the third quarter and went went off for 14 points and, and ended the game with, with 40 unofficially. So phenomenal performance from Caleb Love. And most importantly, the cadets do advance. They will play. We think that will be Francis Howell on Saturday. That game is scheduled to be at Lindenwood University. And we will hope to bring you that one on the Cadet Student Network. We're going to do everything we can to bring it to you. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I want to thank James Motes and Charlie Bryan, the students who made the broadcast possible tonight. I want to thank Mr. Randy Gardner, as always, for his work. Dan, it's been a pleasure working with you. Nice for all you. of us at CSN, my name is Tom Eichwald. Thank you for watching us. Hope you have a great night, and uh, make sure you switch it over to that hockey game. Cadets Trail 3-2 at the start of the third.